So how did you get involved in Top Cow? How did you transition from, from Extreme or what, what was it called at the Maximum Comics? The there was uh, Extreme Studios, which was part of one of the Image Comics founding studios. There was Maximum Press, which was Rob's offshoot imprint that was not part of Image that I managed. Uh, and then there was Awesome Comics, which was Rob, Jeff Loeb, uh, Jeff Matsuda, uh, Alan Moore, Steve Scrooge. It was a big deal. I edited one of Alan Moore's books, which was interesting. Um, and uh, uh, after Awesome Comics went out of business in 96, 7, whenever that was, um, I was staring at, I didn't have a job because Rob was not going to publish anymore for a while. He wasn't sure what he was going to do. Um, and so I went to Larry Martyr and said, uh, okay, can I do Lady Pendragon for Image Central? And he said, yes. And because uh, I had known Larry from the early Image days. So then I published uh, Lady Pendragon for a couple years. Um, and then uh, Top Cow came and they wanted someone to take over their, their publishing division. And they asked me if, if I would do that. Um, and I was about to get married. Um, and I'm like, yeah, it'd be nice to have some health care. You know? So um, being a freelancer is not the greatest thing. So I took the job and I started in uh, April of 98. That was 20 years ago last month. Wow. Um, and uh, uh, I, Mark and I didn't really know each other. And the two guys that hired me, Dave Wall and Brad Fox, and they were neither one at the company much longer after that. In fact, Dave Wall was made my boss initially, and then about six months into that, he asked me if I would be co-president with him, and then he left shortly after that, and I became president of the company. I, I joke with Mark that I've been signing all of his checks and dealing with all his money now for 19 and a half years. Wow. He's lucky I'm not a criminal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, absolutely. To have that kind of trust, I mean, he definitely have it after 19 years. That's well, you know, I'm sure he does now, but yeah. uh, I, I, Back then. I wouldn't have trusted him. Yeah, so no, I'm not going to let anyone uh, sign checks for me after six months. So a big question I have is, you know, back in 96, 97, the, the market was, was definitely going on the downward tilt. Yeah. Um, how did you still manage to stay alive at Top Cow and, and market books and make sure people were picking up books? Like what was something that... Well, we, we sort of tried to counter... Top Cow, one of the reasons I like Top Cow is they sort of counter-programmed. And Mark Silvestri had this just crazy, uncanny ability to seek out new artists and help form and manage them. And the way he did that, he did it with Mike Turner, with Joe Benitez, with Dave Fench, all these big-name guys now. Um, he hired them essentially as his background pencil. They would draw his backgrounds. And then he would work with them in the studio. Uh, in the 90s, we had uh, studios. Like, we had full giant rooms full of artists that all worked. We don't have that anymore. That's been gone for about a decade. I know a few studios. I know the, there's the Raid up in Toronto, and then right. we have Garage Art in, uh, down over here in Burbank. But there's there's definitely, yeah. they're just a bunch of artists or freelancers who get together. It's not yeah. the same as being... It's not a corporate one that we hire. Because exactly. uh, back then, these guys were all employees. We gave them health care and all that stuff. It just, uh, when the numbers started declining, we had to adjust to the economic reality. Uh, when I started, there were 15,000 comic shops in North America. Wow. Now and there's 5,000? Uh, no, there's closer to 2,000. Wow. I thought the 5,000 worldwide, is that right? Something like I don't that? Know if, I don't know the worldwide figure. Okay. But uh, I know that uh, 800 stores in the United States buy 75% of our books. Wow. Well, thank you to those stores. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> keep, keep ordering Top Cow's books. Well, were you around for when Top Cow got started, or you came in a little bit after that? So Yeah, I was later. So Mark had already kind of d developed uh, Witchblade, and he had developed a right. couple other IPs, to, yeah. and then you just kind of came in, and you're like, okay, we're gonna we're gonna get this rolling. Yeah, and uh, the first book I actually developed for Top Gun myself. So the first one I can take credit for was the Tomb Raider launch with Andy Park and Dan Jurgens. Um, I put that together, um, and uh, excuse me. And then we, you know, Rising Stars and the Night Nation, all those books sort of came out. Uh, wanted was a book that I picked up, uh, and there's just been so many. You know, I mean, I've. I've personally written three, four hundred. I don't even know. So but, anywhere Angelina Jolie gets a movie, you guys have been on it. Yeah, that, uh, <laughs> that doesn't suck. So we've had a few. We've had some success in film and TV, and that definitely is a great. Uh, I look at it as great marketing for our book sales. Absolutely, I think that's what it all is. Is in comic books, I feel like you work in in comics to make a great comic book, and you really what I care about is making a great comic book. Right. But it, to make it get to a mass audience, it has to go through film and TV to help get there to really kind of grow the brand and, and let it become its own. Take its own life of its own, you know. Yeah, it's very. We're a very media-driven culture, you know. And I think uh, if you look at the, all the big-selling books, all of them have some sort of film, TV, video game tie-in. There's very few exceptions. I think Saga might be the only one that's in yeah. the top 100 now. Um, so it, it's difficult. So it's a, uh, you know, you got to stress, and it's a long-term game. Like I've sold a lot of books, a lot of think tank books, but it took seven, eight years. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's sort of like you know these sleeper hits that sort of you continue to promote over a long period of time. Yeah.